and a hush fell on the crowd. <laughs> so welcome, welcome. Thank you for ha hanging on for us. Welcome to Thank God It's Wednesday Kitchen. Uh, I'm very excited. This is my kitchen. We've had it brought in specially from Teddington. And um, welcome to uh, the Optimize Your Life event. You've heard about Optimize Your Life. Do you know what we're trying to do with this? We're trying to make Googlers the happiest and healthiest people in any company in the world. Uh, we've got a big task on our hands. So let's go for it. Yay. <laughs> OK. So this is an event from the food team in London. We love our food team and Adrian. Cheer for Adrian and the food team. Hooray! And from the London events team. So welcome to all of you in the room. We're also live in 20 other locations around Europe, from Aarhus to Zurich, uh, from Accra in Ghana to Stockholm, Dublin, Madrid, Copenhagen, and all the usual suspects. So welcome to everybody uh, on the TV. Uh, now, what you want is obviously for me to get out of the way, because this is a really special event. You can see from the atmosphere in the room um, just how much the excitement is here. Uh, hello. Somebody's got a call. One of, one of Jamie's crew's got a call. So are you, are you done? OK, perfect. Thank you. Um, uh, so today is all about the food side of things, and I'm really excited. Um, you know, Google started in 1999, and 1999 is when the Naked Chef started too. So Jamie and Google have grown up at a phenomenal rate. Both of us have got big ambitions, um, and Jamie's an amazing guy. Uh, started in a pub, his parents' pub, in the pub kitchen, became the Naked Chef, practicing, left school at 16. Left school at 16, no qualifications, mm -hmm. went to Carlu uh, catering college, yeah. then Carluccio's, uh, then the River Cafe, best-selling cookbooks, 15 Foundation, campaigning for healthy food for school kids, taking on the food industry in the US. This is one amazing guy. Ladies and gentlemen, Jamie Oliver! Hello! My God, there's a lot of you. Cheers, brother. Ah, oh, the future of England is in this room. My God. Thank you. I, all of a sudden, I feel very popular. That's wonderful. You never know if anyone's going to turn up. Thank you very much. It's a real pleasure to be here. Well, Jamie, welcome to Google. What do you make of it? So far, so good. Lots of, lots of creative thinking places. Lots of cool words. Lots of lovely looking people. And as you all know, you're very important in today's society. Um, you know, you guys are the future of spreading things around and all that sort of business. So, <laughs> you know... I'm feeling a bit dated and old-fashioned, really, but we'll do a bit of cooking anyway. I'm going to take that, the future of spreading things around. I think we might change well, our <laughs> slogan to that. I think, it, yeah, I, I do think, I mean, look, I come from a campaigning, you know, the last eight years I've dedicated to campaigning. And, you know, all of you guys, um, you know, the, the digital world, blogging communities, like, it's so important now. And, and getting feedback from people straight away, getting support, signing petitions, basically... I mean, my job, or well, part of my job, which I'm very good at, is being a pain in the ass um, and an agitator. So, um, you know, you guys make me better at that. So, thank you. Um, so, Jamie, before we get started, there's one thing I wanted to ask you because I noticed that you know you really started out um, with a bit of a profile in about 1999, which is really the time that Google started. Yeah. And you've taken on some big challenges in your life and yes. really tried to, to change the world, and that's some of the things we like to do as well. What is it that motivates you? What, it, what is it that took you from dropping out of school at 16 to taking on the world's food industry? Um, I just, I, I, I'm a big believer. Um, I just love food. I love what food does. I think it's a wonderful lever, leveler. I think it brings people together. Um, I've always found food a wonderful excuse to bring people together and have a good laugh, basically. Um, for me, personally, at school, I was a really bad achiever. I was a special needs kid, um, and I never had an opportunity in school to shine. But then through cooking, touching, feeling, tasting, being able to create things, I, I found that I wasn't bloody useless, and actually I could be half decent. And, and also, when I got out in the big wide world, I realized there was lots of other people like me as well. Um, so I just, I mean, I'm very biased. I think, you know, life is short. You eat three times a day. Um, you know, just, I mean, I, when I talk to kids in schools and stuff, you know, you sort of say, look, um, it's about being streetwise. If I can get you to budget uh, and save money and, and, like, be able to knock out a quick meal in 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, a lovely Sunday roast, birthday cakes, you know, if I can make your life taste better, if, I can have, if you can have more fun doing it, if you can look good, if I can get you laid, if I can save you some money... <laughs> It's good but it's talk. true, it's true. Uh, girls, come on, if a, if a fella can cook, is that not better or what? 
I mean, you might, if he was a bit of a crap shag, you might say, well, he can cook though, do you know what I mean? So, um, well, you know, you balance it up. Um, but um, this isn't quite going the way you wanted it, was it? Um, <laughs> You're spreading it around. So. Um, but no, it's, um, when you can say to someone, look, at the end of the day, the second biggest bill of your life will be the money you spend in a supermarket. Um, and, you know, to I think it's every, to every £10 spent in this country, £2 goes to Tesco's, you know, to put it in perspective. So, you know, I think, you know, if you can make people 10% more efficient at buying, not waste, a waste, 40% of what we buy gets wasted. So, for me, like, if you look at life, you can save hundreds of thousands of pounds, and um, I'm sure you can find good things to do with that. Okay, so, Jeremy, what I think we would like to do is we've had some great video entries for the competition yes. to win a prize, which is cooking right here, right now with you. Right. Okay, and uh, our judges have been in operation, and what we're going to do is... Um, we've got all of our entrants sitting in the front row, so we're waiting to announce the winner. The winner will come up and cook with you for a bit. Lovely. Uh, which I have great. jobs, many and jobs. And then also, ladies and gentlemen, Janie is, is going to do his live webcast from here as well this evening at 6.30, so you're welcome to stay on for that if you want to. So but we're going to do some live cooking right now. So it's tense. We've seen all the videos. The, do, we get uh, to see, do we get to see them, or have you already been we've through We've been them? watching them for the last uh, half hour or so, oh, so, so we're all very familiar. Those. Okay. Okay, so um, the winner of the Cook with Jamie competition... Impressed us the most with her authentic pasta in one pan. It's Maria Barrera from the Double Click team. Come on up, Maria. Come on up. Here she is. Maria. Congratulations. Welcome to the one. Are you Italian? Fantastico. Bloody great. You could have picked me someone that wasn't Italian. Ciao. Tutto bene? Fantastico. Okay. Where are you from in Italy? Nice. Lovely. Campo Basso? Near Far Far? Near Far Far. Why am I? Have you noticed? All of a sudden I've gone quite camp. Okay. Come on then, Tiger. We're going to make some pasta. Um, we, I got this for my birthday. So I thought we'd go through this. It will have no relevance to your life. But I thought it might be nice to see a gadget. So we've been playing with it for a couple of weeks. Tiger, look at that. This is, this is um, an original, one of the first patented pasta machines. Um, I've also, we've got some, uh, I've got two pasta machines that I'm going to give away as prizes to some lovely people in your, your gang today. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going we're gonna, to, me and you, as a united front, we're going to get this room excited about pasta. Yeah. Now, um, you know, as you know, you've got two types of pasta, really. You've got, you got, you know, from the south, you have more of a, a flour and water, or semolina and water. So that's your al dente pasta. Um, and, you know, being sort of kind of generalistic, that's more olive oil and seafood and al dente and stuff like that. And then we've got the more northern style, which is egg and flour. This is what we're going to do today. So it's really, really simple. We can do it by hand in a bowl, or we can just whack it in here. So we've got, is this 200 grams you've done in here? To one person, 100 grams of flour. I mean, I, 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 you can see I'm looking a little bit phased now because I never weigh it. You make of the pasta? Do you make pasta? <laughs> Sometimes. So, so we've got 100 grams of flour there. One egg. Tiger, we have a little pulse up. We're going to get this going. Now, remember, in a bowl, you can do this, you know, literally just by knocking stuff together. Um, it, you're just making Play-Doh. It's so simple. And it's a beautiful thing to make. And, and I'll tell you why... Um, Pasta was in, you can see it coming together. It almost starts to clean the bowl. We've really done nothing. I mean, I, I quite like this as a timing thing. Like when you get home from work, you just kind of go crack, crack, handful, handful, buzz, buzz, put a pan on, get the petal on, you know, get it out. You get the little, pe I have my pasta machine set up all the time. <laughs> nice. So, um, but look, just for me personally, as a non academic person, like it was a real moment for me when like you took something as humble as egg and flour really, really cheap things, right? And then you put them together, you know, and you made Play-Doh, and then you can, f you can, uh, you know, you can flavor it, you can color it, you can put pepper in it, you can put herbs in it, you can pound up basil, it can go green, you can kind of get mushrooms and whiz them up and make them go brown, you can put the squid ink in it, you can change all these colors, and then you can make all these different shapes. Tagliatelli, you know, Tagliolini, Papadelli, come on, give them some names. Penne. Penne. Oh, um. Rigatoni. So, as you can see. See? 
Do you know what I mean? Silly. Feel silly. <laughs> See? Um, so, you know, it goes on and on. For me, this was like freedom, right? It's freedom. And, and what it meant was that I could be creative. And it meant, uh, it meant, you know, I think, you know, without getting too soppy, like the beauty of kind of moving on with life and kind of cracking on is about confidence and self-esteem and feeling good about yourself. And like, you know, when you're told your shit all the time, when you kind of get this little bad boy and actually you can knock out Tagliatelle, Papadelli, Link, you, know, uh, you know, some beautiful fettuccine, you start thinking, oh, I'm quite good. So it's a little, for me, and I'm saying to you, it's a little bubble of control and expertise that makes you feel good about stuff. So what we're going to do is we've got our pasta coming together here, dead simple, and we're going to make, we're going to make our pasta. We're going to put it through this ridiculous machine here. Now, um, if you want to sit on our... Me? Yeah, of course. You won the competition. You did, Are you, you sure not it's not going to break? Huh? Are you sure it's not going to no, break? No, no, you're in good nick, darling. You'll be all right. <laughs> You want me to see it? Yeah, of course. Okay. Well, you can do a handstand if you want. <laughs> but, um, so listen, what we're going to do is we're going to extrude this pasta, okay? So we're going to put this through there. Um, now, to kind of put it in perspective, and you can basically um, wind it down, and as it starts to come out, my darling, as it pushes the pasta out, you can cut it yep. uh, into sort of lengths like that. <laughs> it's a sharp knife, be careful. And there's a little flour here. Now, um, the other thing is, is to be really simplistic about it. Crack one egg, handful of uh, crack one egg, handful of flour, mix it up. When it comes together, use a full wine bottle and just take little nuggets out and roll it out. And it takes seconds. You don't need this kit. You don't even need a pasta machine. Roll it out. If it's a, go as thin as you can, and then you can roll it up with a bit of flour, slice it up, and you've got beautiful rustic pasta. So here we go. Here, it's not it will but do. It's harder. It will do. Well, it's, how's it going? Have you got? Do you mind if I? <laughs> Please. Keep, keep, keep going, Tiger. Go on. More? Go on, push. Bit, bit harder. Go on. Where did Here you get this machine? Out. Like, give it a cut now. Don't worry. Give it a cut now. Yeah, don't be nervous. All right. Uh, there we go. Oh, no. That's, that's, that's all right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Go on. Wow. Mm. I'm not going to the gym tonight. <laughs> that's all right. I think it's because you're riding side saddle. There you go. Keep going up. Okay, a bit longer. Bit faster. Can you bit go a bit faster? <laughs> I will try. There we, go. there we go. Another one. Here we go. There you go. And if you toss that in pasta, we've got a lovely tagliatelle. I'll tell you what, I think we screwed this right up. <laughs> so bring it out. We'll put some more flour in it. We'll have another little go. We've got pasta. We've got pasta. Go on. Push it all out. I think it's a little bit soft. If you mix up some of that um, flour into it, just make it a bit firmer and put it through again, we'll be in a good place. Now, that only, takes, that only <laughs> takes 45 seconds to cook, okay? So I thought we'd make a really quick summer sauce, dead simple. Um, I did one of these on my um, uh, little, we do these little live, we're doing one tonight, we do li little webcasts. Um, two years ago, it would cost about 100 grand and satellites and 30 people to do it. Now, we do it with a couple of dudes, a couple of phones, a couple of computer, and out it goes. Um, so we're going we're gonna to do it. We did it the other day. It's very simple. It's an uncooked pasta sauce. So we're going to crack on with that. How's it going? Almost there. Okay. <laughs> don't mind. Now, before we do this, let me just think. While we're doing that, we're going to knead that up, get it a bit firmer. The handle's come off. Is it? <laughs> no, no, no. It's oh, the end off. That's, that's <laughs> all right. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to... Is there any single girls in the audience? Yeah. Single girls. <laughs> Any single girls in the audience? Okay. Blonde lady, please stand up. What's your name? Stephanie. Stephanie come, please come forth. Give a round of applause to Stephanie. <laughs> now, don't be scared. I'll look after you. Where do you come from? Lovely. Whereabouts? Lovely. Is that north or south? Excuse my ignorance. South. Lovely. Sit down. Any single men in the audience? <laughs> She's lovely. She's very foxy. You're a chef, mate, honestly. That's cheap. Any, any single men? Come, we got one here. Anyone else? Anyone else? Not you can't Glenn. be the only single man. <gasps> Are you straight? Good, okay, up you come. <laughs> nice to meet you. What's your name? Glenn, sit down, make yourself known over there. We've got wine coming. Um, <laughs> don't you worry. We'll be all right. Now, 
I'll tell you what I'll do while these go. How's it going? It looks better. Very Much well. better. Yeah. Beautiful. Lovely. Just put a little flower on it as it comes out as well. That's nice. Have we got those cherries, um, lovely Christina Scarabucci? Oh, cherry tomatoes. Ah, that's where we got it wrong. Don't worry. Um, okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to make these guys a little dish. Okay? Um, I'm going to do them a quick dish while I muck about with this pasta. It's a scallop dish. Um, I'm just going to get rid of this pan here. Um, so, we've got an induction hob here. So, Chef, you might have to help me with this one. Here we go. Oh, it's working, I think. And I press... No? Could you just help me with that? I'm not very good on induction. I like gas and fire. <laughs> I'm not very good on technology. Okay, so we have pasta here. Yes. Well done. That's on. So, we're going to make these lovely people uh, a little dish. You like scallops? Nice. We've got some champagne there. We've got some wine. So, this is a lovely, quick little dish. Um... Yeah, I don't, I don't mean to make you guys feel awkward. Don't worry about us lot. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> so we've got a pan getting nice and hot. We've got two things happening right now. We've got some... <laughs> that's it. Yes. I wish we had some romantic music. So, darling, we come over here. Yep. What we're going to do, if you can get, um, get a pair of tongs and just get some olive oil in here and just add some pancetta or smoky bacon yep. going in there. About three rashes would be lovely. I'm going to get some beautiful scallops here. Dive a quart. I'm just going to score them halfway down in a crisscross, okay? Now, this is for two reasons. To take on seasoning, to cook quicker, but also to look beautiful as well. So I'm going to take those. And then, uh, best friends, you know, scallops are sweet and delicious. Um, you could do the same dish with little pieces of monkfish, exactly the same. You could do the same thing with prawns. Um, I'm just going to cook them with some smoky bacon, or as you call it, pancetta. Um, so we're going to go in with the bacon. We've got the olive oil. We're hoping that our induction hob actually Gets works. Three. Beautiful. Three scallops, three bits of bacon. Now, lentils, right? Lentils is a funny one, right? You can take them dry. You don't have to soak them. You can put them in a pan. You can cook them in about 15 to 20 minutes, okay? Now, lentils aren't the sexiest thing in the world. People get a bit, you know, a bit miserable, <laughs> boring. Um, all you do is just put a little cherry tomato in there, cover it with water. When they're nice and soft and cooked, then the flavoring begins, okay? So what we're going to do with this is we're going to dress it almost like salad. So we're going to put in here um, some olive oil, lemon juice, and a load of chopped herbs. That's not so safe. Um, we're going to bring that back up to the heat. We can see the bacon here is just getting nice and crispy. Hopefully, you guys will start to smell stuff in a little bit. That's on full whack. When I first started, um, well, a long time ago when I was at college at Westminster, I was 18, the Rue brothers came and did a demonstration the first year these were in invented. So this is microwaves, not gas. And the Rue brothers were the most famous chefs in the country at that time. And they started to cook and they burnt every dish. <laughs> and I feel for them because all these years later, I still can't, I still can't get my head around it because you can't see it. That's the beautiful thing about fire. So darling, what we're going to do is as soon as that starts getting some color, we're going to season up these scallops. Now I'm going to use... Lemons here, a little bit underrated um, in the sense that, that we always chuck the skins away. So if you can just do a little flick of the lemon zest like that. There. For me, so yeah, just from a height. We're going to season it also with uh, some sea salt, mold and sea salt. Anyone from Essex here? <laughs> okay, it's just us then, darling. <laughs> um, so mold and sea salt from Essex. And we're turning the bacon over. It's starting to take on some colour. Now scallops, they only need literally three minutes cooking. So that's, that's enough, sweetheart. But they've got beautiful flavour in that, in that zest. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to angle... You can see it just taking on colour. I'm going to angle the fat down this side. And we're going to put the scallops cut side down first in that lovely fat there, the smoky bacon fat. Jamie, uh, we've got a couple of questions from go people on the other end of the telly. You can ask you as we're going. Yeah, go so, for it. Um, Somebody from Dublin, Grain in Dublin, said, what do you think we should keep in our kitchens to make tasty, healthy meals at the weekend? We get lots of lovely, tasty meals um, here in the week. Well, I think, you know, to be honest, growing herbs wherever you live is wicked. Olive oil, lemon juice brings everything to life, whether it's a simple piece of fish, a battered out, simple cooked bit of char-grilled, uh, you know, on a griddle pan chicken. So, I mean, for me, herbs, olive oil and lemon juice and chilli are my life. It. And yeah, well, it's just, you know, they're so good for you. If you, get, if you have herbs in your life, you will be a healthier person. They all do different things, but it's incredibly good for you. Um, some help you digest. Some are great for your liver. Some help you, uh, you know, thin your blood or speed up your endorphins. Uh, chilies speed up your uh, metabolism by 25% for about two hours after. So a great thing 
for sort of burning up the energy, but also it does release endorphins, so you can kind of get high on it. Um, <laughs> which, I think the you know, big one is this is beautiful. Awesome. Okay, so now just control this. You can see here, just turn that one over again to you. I'll just keep giving it some love. Is this, oh, this is hot. We're going to put some olive oil in here. Now, olive oil, good olive oil, not really for cooking, but for finishing, dressing. So when you finish a, pas a pasta dish or a soup or a stew, just a little bit goes in like this. We're going to put in some uh, lemon juice. Like that. So we're just going to treat this like a salad almost, but it's getting warm. And then we're going to feed our romantic couple over here. You can see it's getting very involved. Why did you pick him? <laughs> to be honest, mate, it was my, my only choice. <laughs> um, but you know, you never know. It could, it, we, we could start a beautiful thing here. Yeah. So we're going to go in with some basil. Like that. Stir it in. The scallops are looking good, my darling. Let's get our plate. Where is our plate? We're going to go for a little bit of this. We have a little taste. You can take those off the heat okay. now, sweetheart. So what are you looking... Not quite yet, sweetheart. So we're going to... Just mix this up. You're right, yeah, just turn it off. Okay. There you go. We have a little taste. And you want to balance the olive oil, salt and pepper, a little mint I think I'll put in there as well, herbs. Vinegar's really good, actually. Vinegar and lentils is really Just a little swig makes all the difference. So I'm just going to chop it up. And then we'll serve this up. Now, a nice thing to make the le I always feel there's a bit of a link missing with the lentils. Um, and the thing that really makes the difference is a little bit of yogurt or creme fraiche. So that, for me, a little bit like with rice, is a beautiful thing. So I'm just going to serve the lentils on here. Nice to put things like purple basil if you've got it. Stuff like that. You can chop rocket in there as well. We're going to go for our scallops here. Very nice. Put that on top like that. And our bacon. So what was, a, any more questions you got from your guys? Yeah, sorry, um, I'm just right. waiting. Uh, your campaign in America um, has started to be quite successful. What can people who, who are around the world do to kind of uh, join that campaign, for example, against sales of flavored milk and some of the things you've been campaigning against? Um, look, Matt, I mean, he, here lies the thing. I, it's but I have a really weird job. I have a really weird job. I mean, basically, like I said, I'm a storyteller on one hand. I write books. Um, but really, the TV bit is the storytelling. Um, so I, 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 in my profession, people come to me and give me stories and tell me about things that are right and wrong, you know, whether it's Greenpeace or just regular people or kids or whatever. And then it's my job to go out and let everyone know. And then the thing is, we sort of created this genre, the new genre, really, which is sort of campaigning TV. And it, I think it's really important these days. I mean, um, creating TV that scares politicians to sort of watch their back and do a good job. And, you know, so much, so much slips through the net. So, I mean, you know, stuff like what we did in America, it's a really weird one because it, it was over two and a half months of hell and everything went wrong. But the story became about lack of transparency and not being a... <laughs> good <laughs> Lord. <laughs> Things are looking up over here. Um, <laughs> It became about lack of transparency. But of course, I know deep down, that if I'm telling a good story, when it goes on TV, yeah. it all kicks off. And, and it did, because the guy that ran the, uh, the food, the local, you know, the schools, who was an idiot, got fired, which is good. Um, and uh, there you go, my love. So we've got some scallops. You, this is to share. So we've got the first dish, scallops, lentils, crispy bacon, a little creme fraiche. Um, but, it, you know, but we d it did start making... I mean, you should see the food in these schools. It's terrible. And, it, and it's actually worse than it was in England seven years ago. And, you know, we're sort of in transition of changing. But so how can people like um, Darren in, in Cambridge, Massachusetts get involved? How can people over here get involved in the campaign? Uh, well, the, the thing to do, really, I mean, that's where the kind of web is great. Things like the petition. Go to, uh, to thefoodrevolution.com, sign the petition. Um, I'm trying to get it... Th this is a, I'm trying to get it to a million before I take it to the White House. So we've got just over 700,000. And we, we need, how many, how many employees you got at Google? About 1,500 in London. 1,500? 1,500, about 600 in here, I think. Well, if, that, if you can get five, ten of your mates to sign the petition, we're getting well, well on the way towards. 
um, you know. Who's up uh, for that? Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's all about stirring the pot, really. It's all about, I mean, I think the, the, um, the thing that I've tried to do in England and America is, is sort of prove that, um, and it's what you do at Google, actually. It's like, if you've got, if you're promoting healthy food, healthy life, then you can learn, you can be productive, you can, you know, you, 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 know, you can get on in life, you know. Cool. So we got our first dish over here. You all right? Yeah. You got the champers and the white wine. We should do the pasta, really, yeah. shouldn't we? Because I'm sort of going well out of order here. So <laughs> we have some pasta. I'm going to put that water back on. Thank you very much. I, fi I find myself going around the world always cooking in other people's kitchens, which is always challenging to, f to know where everything is. You know, in your own kitchen, you're like... But let's get rid of this. Okay, I want to show you an uncooked pasta sauce. So lovely Christina, if I may. Jamie, while you're doing that, that. Baby, perhaps Go people in the room have got some questions. If you, if you want to ask Jamie a question, then there's a mic in the, in the center there if anybody's brave enough to step yeah, up and don't uh, be afraid. have a go. While you're doing that, some of us are parents, Jamie. You've got kids. Yeah. What do you do to get your kids to think about eating healthily and eating sensibly? Um, well, nothing, really. I just, it's just a natural part of what we do. You know, um, we, we, we try and grow a few things. Um, and, and they react really well to that. We, we try and sit down at least twice a week as a whole family, and, and that, that is profoundly important. Um, even, don't even, you don't even have to buy anything. Just walk in your kid through a farmer's market twice a month for 20 minutes would make a profound difference by the time that kid gets to 18. I mean, what, what you've got to understand from my perspective, because like, I, don't, I, I, mean, I, I don't know how much of the work you know that I do, but I don't just go on talking about stuff. Like, I'm in people's homes you know, uh, of all walks of life in different countries. And the stuff that's really killing people, the stuff that's making people lose their dad at like 40 and there's a kid with no dad, and, and, and which is very common, the biggest killer in, in America and England um, is diet-related disease. And put it into perspective, 8% of people in America die through homicide or gun crime, you know, and over 60% is diet-related disease. So, like, you know, the thing is, if you think about the resource that the police have, and then we can't even get a decent meal in a school. So it's kind of, that's, that's the way I see the world. So I think, I suppose what I'm trying to say is little things, uh, as, as a parent, you don't have to do big, grand things. But I think enjoy food, do little things often, go down a farmer's market, let them choose, make, let the kids make decisions, grow in stuff. Make, I've never, ever met a kid from anywhere that if you teach them how to grow something, they won't try it. So, you know, just have fun with it, basically. And you make your kids do all the pasta twirly yeah. things and all that? Yeah, Daisy does. Poppy's not so interested. She's a bit of a bookworm, but Daisy's all over it. I mean, she's eight years old, and she can do poached eggs, fried eggs, scrambled eggs. She's on omelettes. She's, like, making smoothies. She's doing cappuccino and the frothing. <laughs> like, and she's really cheap labour. She don't cost anything. So, um, you know... It, I'm going to go home and have a word. <laughs> My darling, please. Yes. So this is a Sicilian um, pasta that I learned. If we just take a little of the, uh, just long strokes of, of the lemon. So it's lemon juice, a little lemon zest. Um, mind your finger, sweet pea. Um, <laughs> I'm going to scent it. I love it. I'm going <laughs> to... We don't want any finger in there. Um, what you can do, you don't have to, but just what I love about herbs is you can take literally four or five leaves, put it in a pestle and mortar, and the flavour that comes out of that is incredible. So a pinch of salt um, and a little um, bashing of the basil. Sorry, I know you're eating, but just bash that up for me, mate. Um, you get that to a paste. A bit of delegation going on here. Um, and then what we're going to do is balance parmesan and olive oil. Um, so that's fine, sweetheart, if I can take that off of you. Sure. If you can pour olive oil in there. Yeah. This is very good. Extra virgin olive oil. If any of you are confused about olive oil, a lot of people are. So, okay, you generally get what you pay for, but there's nothing wrong with the cheap stuff. The cheap stuff will be highly, highly filtered which means you probably can cook with it, not too bad, but not too hot, not for wok frying, but for cooking off prawns and stuff like that. Anything over a tenner is very good. Anything cold pressed and over a tenner is like gonna be pretty damn good olive oil. It's only good for a year, oh, wait, sorry, it's only at its best for about eight months, and then it starts to sort of deplete. Um, and really, you use really good oil as an ingredient, not an oil. So what, in my house, I'll have a cheap oil for doing light cooking, um, I'll have a, a, like a sunflower oil or a groundnut oil for like wok frying or high heat cooking. And then the kick-ass stuff I use sort of little by little for finishing things like this dish. So I'm going to squeeze in the lemon juice like that. How's your bashing going? But that's a very delicate way of doing it. Give it a good old rattling, mate. Go on, give it a good old bashing. That looks a bit dodgy, but there's... <laughs> um, 
I think I'll take that away from you, Mal. It is only your first date, after all. Um, <laughs> bless. Colourful lot here at Google. Okay. Now look, what I love is that tiny bit of basil is going to make dramatic change to this dish. So my Italian princess, if you can come over here. Yeah. Um, we're going to put in a little handful of Parmesan cheese. Freshly grated. Don't, I, I wouldn't buy the pre-grated stuff. Always get the blocks. Olive oil in. And it makes a kind of, we're making kind of an, a lemon, basil, parmesan, and a good olive oil sort of slurry, right? And then I'll come back and show you how it's going to be good. Now, hopefully this is going to come. I've got a bit of a spiky question from Dublin for you, Jamie, if spiky. you don't mind. Spiky question. Nice. This is from my friend Pendo. She says, uh, I bought your book and made a couple of lovely meals. They were really nice, but I found the title a bit misleading. Yeah. Neither meal took the promised 30 minutes. Did you ever consider the less catchy 30-minute meals only if you've got a food processor title? <laughs> um... <laughs> Tell her to read the bloody introduction. Yeah, okay. Um, no. There you go, Pendo. <laughs> Hello, hey, my friend. How you doing? Um, I have a question about buying stuff. For example, you mentioned Tesco before, and it's like, oh, 2% of all, or 20% of all yes, those yes. sales from, come from Tesco. So I wonder, and I have a friend who is um, buying stuff only like from farmer's markets, it's very like uh, organic stuff. How is, uh, what's your opinion on buying, let's say, vegetables and like natural stuff, not processed stuff, but from Tesco, from Sainsbury's, from the normal supermarkets? Is yep. it, sh sh because I cannot go to a farmer's market every Saturday, you know, yeah, it would take up too much of my time. So is it okay to buy vegetables at yeah, Tesco? Yeah, of course, yeah. Look, I think especially here in England, I think to, to, compared to many countries, there's, there's been a lot changing in the last five years. So. Um, you know, ob obviously buying British is great, but like general welfare of chicken and pork is is way in excess of most countries, and loads of people will debate that. But I'm a geek and I know it and I study it. Like it, it's pretty damn high. So I mean, for me personally, I, I I shop in a supermarket. I get me everyday bits and pieces, and I also go to some farmers markets as well. Um, and I think it's nice to balance stuff, and then using internet stuff that's convenient, and having stuff delivered. So I think it's a balance of all those things. I mean, look, if you live out in the country and you've got a local butcher and stuff, use them, of course. But I think for modern-day busy city people, you know, it's quite nice to do a bit of everything um, and just balance it up. But at the end of the day, generally, if you go to a supermarket, there's always a choice. Uh, you know, fairly high welfare and sort of everyday basic stuff. So you can kind of buy into whatever you can afford or whatever you're into, really. But, I mean, you know, uh, you know Im organics is really important, but I think people confuse organics... Uh, organics is a way of producing food, not a standard. It is a standard, but it, it's really about not spraying it with any pesticides and bits and pieces like that. And if it's an animal, it will be twice as old before, by the time it gets, you know, so it does cost more. So a lot of people do resent it. But I think for me personally, like, you know, I, I'm a, I love cooking at that level and being geeky and it's all wild fish and, and, and everything's perfect. But the real... My job, actually, is working with people that have only got 50 quid to spend on food a week for a family of four, or, f you know, or less. Um, so the question is, what do, you, what do you give to them? So really, it's turning a bunch of ingredients into some dinner. Um, and it's a lot of ground meat and minced meat and root vegetables and trying to make you know, classic things like bolognese and lasagnas and sort of stuff that people like. Um, so that's kind of a priority. I mean, I think... We have these centres around England called the Ministry of Food Centres. We've got, we've got about six, and we got, we're going to have 15 in Australia. Um, we've got two in the States and counting. And basically, it's free cooking lessons for anyone that wants to go there. But, you know, um, you know it's really basic stuff that we're teaching. Because I guess at the end of the day, uh, you know, most parents weren't taught to cook at school, and they're both working. So, you know, that's what we're trying to do, really. Thank you. Cheers, mate. Any more questions, brother? Any more questions from the floor? So I, I've got a question. We were involved with you on the Dream Teachers project. Right. And it was really inspiring. We had a whole bunch of teachers submit videos oh, yeah. on YouTube yeah. and, and, and win prizes, which is great. Um, what did you learn from that uh, process? It seemed like a big journey Dream for you. Dream school. Yeah. Um, I don't know what's going on with this pasta. Sorry. Um, I'm going to have to fix this. Um, Dream school for me was brilliant. Uh, it was like, it, for me, it was an opportunity to sort of, like, if you had a magic wand, like, what would you do at school? If you didn't have any rules, if you could make up the rules, what would you do at school? Um, and, you know, that, of course, we had celebrity, we had Olympic gold medalists and stuff teaching the lessons and bits and pieces like that. But, um, you know, it was an opportunity. Most of the teachers had done badly at school. 
But what was amazing was, um, and I think the reason the programme was valid, was that over 50% of all British kids graduate school with not five GCSEs of grade C or above. And therefore, they can't go into university and they can't go into higher education. So I guess what the show was saying was half of it's not working. Um, so surely we should be teaching these kids a bit different. So, you know, it was, it was a bit controversial at times. Everyone thought we were there to knock the teachers, but we weren't. It was really about sort of saying, is there another way? And um, certainly, personally, I learned, I think, just as much as the students did. So, so you think there is another way, having done that? Yeah, I definitely. I, I, I love the argument about what is education. What is it? What's the point of it? What is it there to do? So, all right, we've got maths and, 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 and English, and it's really, really important. But like, I know that if you don't do your geography homework, I know you're not, you know, you ain't going to die young. But I know if you don't learn about food, where it comes from, what it does to your body, you will die young. Because at the moment, we've got the first generation of kids that are going to die at a younger age than their parents, you know. So, you know, I guess I, I, I'm sort of biased because I think like the, the sport, the sport thing, and, uh, and the kind of food education thing, I think, should be in every single school, obviously. Right, I'm going to attempt to cook this pasta. There's some that we did earlier that I'm going to unwind here. This is a tagliolini. So, oh, is that boiling again? I do apologise, everyone. I'm a bit caught out on this technology. Um, boil, please. Um, so we're going to... No, we, I think we're fine. Are you guys... Oh, you cleaned that off, didn't you? My God. Right, let's do the next one. Me and my Italian darling... We are going to make this, this very simple pasta. If any of you guys want to ask any more questions, please come up to the mic. Yeah, Honestly, ask yeah. anything you like. There's nothing I won't answer. I had a quick question. Go for it, um, brother. So Ferran Andrea is taking 18 months off sabbatical to inspire himself um, with cooking. Have you ever taken sabbaticals and gone and traveled the world to find sort of really uh, out there ingredients and, and different ways of cooking? And could yeah. you just talk about some sort of travel experiences yeah, sure. that you've had with cooking? Um, uh, well, I travel a lot, and I meet a lot of amazing people, and I'm always learning. Uh, I'd love to take a sabbatical. It'd be really nice. Um, uh, I will take a sabbatical in a couple of years, but I, it, I'm in a kind of... I have a funny job. You know, I'm responsible for 6,000 staff and, and 20 restaurants and charities and all of their mortgages and their families, and we're in a recession, and it's kind of like... I think that's important right now, you know? And, uh, and, and you know what as well, and I'm, look, I'm positive it's the same with you guys, but I'm blessed. You know, I feel like I've made good decisions over the last 10 years. I've surrounded myself by clever, beautiful people that have got my back. And when I'm in front of my guys, I'm inspired. We bang ideas around and we sort of like come back and then we bang other things around. And we have a very creative job, you know, whether it's building restaurants, what does it look like, what's on the floor, what's the experience, how are you greeted, what is the food, what's the price, you know, what's the vibe, or writing a book, how do you design it? what's the kind of mentality behind it, or documentaries. And, you know, some of my best work that I do on TV, I hate making. The documentaries is, is seriously, it's like a colonic irrigation. It's terrible. <laughs> um, but, you know, you know, but then I do the cooking shows, which is just beautiful and joy. So, and, like, next week we're doing a festival, which is on uh, Clapham Common, which is uh, basically bringing music and all the chefs of London and demonstrations together and, you know, just having a big old party. So, you know, I'm... Very inspired, but I would one day love. I've pressed something. How did, what did I do wrong though? What did I do? It's got a it's it's got a problem with me. Um, but I would love to do. I mean, I actually was talking to him about his sabbatical, and um, I think sometimes what you start off so simple, and then it goes crazy, and you look. I mean, look, I'm 36 years old. I started when I started my first employee when I was 20, and I got 6,000 staff now. Last time I counted. Like, you think, shit, what happened? You know, you know, and I'm happy, but, like, simple was nice. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> and even, like, Google, come on, you know. You know the, so it's like, I, I, I would like to have that time out. I don't know when. I want to go to Argentina. I want to go to Asia. I want to go to Timbuk bloody too, you know. Um, and I love people. I love people. And no matter where I go in the world, I always find great food. Even if there's lots of bad food, I will always find the good stuff, so... Let's finish this pasta. Okay, the pasta is going to go in. Uh, we're going to cook it. I, there was nothing wrong with yours, apart from it did stick together, which is probably my fault, because I'm probably not leading the best charge at the moment. But I'm, <laughs> I'm trying my best. I'm trying my best. So the pasta's gone in. It'll only take hardly any time at all to cook. We're going to mix it up. Our romantic couple here, you can see, is going very, very well. 
we're going to serve it up. You can share. There we go. And just after, once we're done, we'll carry on doing questions and bits and pieces like that. Um, after, after we've done that, I'm going to knock out, I'm going to be doing um, mushrooms, beautiful wild mushrooms, like the best way to cook mushrooms that can go off into any, in any way, whether it's risotto in bruschetta or in quiches or, you know, it's the, the ultimate way to cook mushrooms and the perfect steak. So if you want to hang around for that, you're more than welcome. It's only going to last 13 minutes, so, because uh, it's live, so I've got to pull my finger out. So things better work, um, but we have a little, we'll have a little, um, it stopped working again. Oh, dear. Do you have another question while, while you're sure. um, working What's your favorite food memory or the last thing you ate that you thought, oh my god, this is absurd? Um, okay, the last thing I did that was like un that uniquely like that. Um, okay, we, we kind of had this bouncing around. We were, we were in Yorkshire where they invented the Yorkshire pudding. And um, we were sort of making it with various people and it was like lovely. And if you look at a Yorkshire pudding, it's very similar to a, a Bellini or a pancake batter. And then I was thinking, you know, Bellinis. And then I was thinking smoked fish, smoked salmon. And then I would made this very, very simple. It, and it sounds ultra humble, and it is. But it's like smoked trout, lemon juice, sort of cream cheese, you know, some, some light herbs. And it's like smoky, sour, and creamy. And then I did these little mini Yorkshire puddings that I just like straight out of the oven, like big and fluffy, and then just used it like, like little, you know, just had the two together. So like a pot basically a pot of kind of like a smoked fish pate and these lovely Yorkshire puddings. And I'm like, oh my God, this is amazing. And I started, and everyone was like, wow. So, you know, it's really funny. I, and they had, oh yeah, we had grated horseradish with the smoked fish. It was unbelievable. But, you know, I, I kind of thought, why well, I'd never tried that before. But it's nice when you give it to other people and you can see in their eyes as well, it's, you know, it's good. But it, it, to be honest, it, the kind of, the way things work, it's like that all the time. We're, we're cooking every, I mean, I'm still cooking every single day and we're testing things every single day. So with the pasta, we're going to go into our parmesan, uh, into our sauce here. This is probably the worst pasta I've ever cooked in my life. <laughs> I do apologize. This is the beauty of cooking. Cooking not on gas. So Jamie, do you ever have a bad day where it doesn't work out on your Yeah, plate? like today. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, all the, you know, uh, not, not too often. But um, that is really fucking horrible. <laughs> God bless. You're going to get the idea, but use your imagination, all right? Um, my God, and with an Italian as well. Um, Doesn't look good. Here we go. <laughs> this is not good. Is that pasta? No, it's fucking <laughs> horrible. Okay, let's just pretend that never happened. <laughs> bless you. Tuck in. Try not to vomit. The sauce is very fresh. I promise the next bit will work. If I can get that pan to work. Um, yes, but I think, you know, it, the worst thing, you know, I've been cooking a lot on wood ovens in the last sort of year and a half. And um, when you get it wrong in a wood oven, you really screw things up. You know, not just on induction hobs. Okay. Um, what, does the oven catch light? Or? You just... When you spent seven hours slow cooking like a lovely shoulder of pork or something like that, and then like you just don't look at it for a second and you just nuke it, and there's nothing savable at all, okay. uh, it's a nightmare. That's a bad day. Yeah. I think we've got another question here. We've got about another five minutes to go. So. If you have, oh. if you could have one tip, for example, you have friends that love McDonald's and all the unhealthy stuff and everything massively with sauces and everything, how would you excite people like that to kind of go into the healthy route? Um, I, well, uh, t to be honest, I mean, I think um, what I tried to do when, when, when I did 20 Minute Meals app was like, I mean, that was a really interesting time for me because, like, um, we had the shopping list bit and we also had the recipe where you had the step by step pictures and the little tutorials and, like, if there was any techniques, there was a little video. And for me, that was the ultimate, actually. It was like an app is better than a book because it's got all the extra bits that you could never put in a book. So that was interesting for me because most of the people that bought it, most of them had never bought a book before. There was a new audience. But also, um, you know, it was amazing sort of seeing people shopping with it and then kind of Twittering about it and sort of, I think, I think like a f phones are really great for that. And we're on Android now. So Thank God uh, for that. Yeah. <laughs> hey. We got there. We got there in the end. We make a load of Android here. That's what we cook. Yes. Yeah. But I think, you know, I think, I think just making things simple. I mean, I love, 
when, when they work, like, like the pan or the griddle pan or the wok is brilliant, really, really good. And, and I think, you know, you can have like little four, five ingredient dishes. You know, I, like I said, using the chili and the herbs and citrus and olive oil, you know, that's kind of the bedrock of everything that I do. Yes, darling. Hi, Jamie. Hi, um, darling. <laughs> I'd like to make a lot of your pasta dishes, but I'm gluten intolerant. Do you have any tips for making gluten-free pasta, or would you just avoid it altogether? Um, no, what you can do is, um, there's parts of Italy, um, I don't know if you've seen it before, where they make uh, pasta out of chestnut flour or even polenta. Um, it's not very common, but they do do it. And uh, you get a firmer dough, and literally you just go and get uh, a finely gra ground uh, polenta or maize, and you mix it with water, you make a tight dough, and you get one of those little um, uh, pasta rollers, and you make a sheet and you can cut it up. It's, a, it's not the same as regular pasta, it's more robust, but you know, at the end of the day, it's still beautiful and it, and it can carry lovely sauces and stuff like that. In fact, if you, I tell you what, I think I have. Come up here, darling, and I'm gonna give you a present. Oh. We, have, we have a pasta machine here. Oh. Which you can do. Great. So, good luck. Got to ask good questions. How about that? That was nice. Yeah, they, they're still eating it. <laughs> yeah. Anybody else have a question? So I've got a question for Glenn. How, how's the meal, Glenn? How's it going? Absolutely pucker. Oh my god. <laughs> uh, yeah. Sure. Uh, you, want, oh, you want more? You want more? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry. How's your romantic date going? I don't know what that means. <laughs> Bless. All right, got another question? Hi, Jamie. Apart, Hi, from your, apart from your own restaurants, what's your favourite place to eat out in London? Uh, well, obviously, I worked for many, many years in the River Cafe. Love that. Um, you know, places like Morrow in Exmouth Market, I love, but I used to work with those guys too. Uh, places like Trulio in Is Islington, but that... Oh, bless you. <laughs> well, that's one of my ex-students, so I'm biased there as well. Um, they're all we're all kind of from the same family. Um, but it's nice, like with Trulio, like Tim that runs it, he was out in our first group of students from 15. So it's kind of a nice, it's our 10th year anniversary next year. And it's really nice that the first year students are like, they're smashing it now. You know, they're doing their thing and they're doing a great job. So it's kind of a nice time. Uh, where else do I love, love, love? Bizarrely, I don't really get to go out much in London. So I'm always working, really. Um, I'm kind of better in other countries um, <laughs> when I'm kind of have to go somewhere. Do you tend to cook uh, at home a lot? Always, yeah. yeah. My missus don't really cook at home. It's me. <laughs> and, and people don't believe me, but it's true. She really doesn't cook for me. She, she's done a few stews. <laughs> and they're really not good. <laughs> um, but they're probably better than that pasta. So, you know, it's, um, she's winning today. Next question. Pleasure. First, a comment. Um, so I'm, I'm American, and I have a confession. My favorite pancake, American pancake recipe is yours. Ah! Um, and so my, my question is totally unrelated. I'm just wondering what your least favorite food is. My least favorite? Well, I'm not really into genitals. Um, <laughs> I've, I've um, you know, I have, in, in your country, I have taken part in some Rocky Mountain oysters. Bullocks, bollocks. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't the best moment of my life. Um, I've been offered lots of other genitals, which I declined. Um, in Japan, cod semen wasn't my best moment. Um, and I did swallow. Um, what was, re what was really, I, I mean, I love Japan. It's, uh, and I worked there for three years, and, and I enjoy the food so much. Um, but I'd, ha I'd had no meat for a long time. And there's this little dude on this little grill, and, and it, I go, he's got chicken, he's got chicken. Yeah, shamon! <laughs> and he's like, he's doing all the thing, I'm going, I haven't had any meat for like two weeks. And like, he just get, you know how they do, they give you this beautiful, perfect little thing, and they give it to you, in, and I just banged it in my mouth, and it just exploded, and I went, oh, it's not chicken! <laughs> what is it? And I da, 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 da. what is it? And that's cod semen, I'm like, ah. Did he didn't have a choice, it had gone by then. Um, do you wish you'd never asked that question? Yeah. Let's put it down on the whole thing. So how many people are feeling inspired by Jamie's presence here today? Yay! Oh, bless you. There's an opportunity. 
opportunity for you to all get involved. Get involved in this Wellness Optimise Your Life programme. So if you want to be a champion, don't forget to email Ollie, who's sitting at the front here, have a wave at Google, and you can become a wellness champion. I don't really know what that means, but it sounds inspiring. So we can, we can do that. Jamie, I think Absolutely. we're nearly out of time. Is there anything else yeah, you want well, to say? Yeah, all I want to say is that thanks for having me. I know it's been a bit kickball scramble, but thank you so much. It's, you know, it's, it's a real pleasure. Um, anything, I mean, I think the one thing for me that I'm passionate about is, you know, uh, whether it's food, well, as far as food is concerned, it's a massively, th there's nothing, the only thing worth more than petrol is food. And the only thing affecting our world around us, you know, in a big, big way, it, you know, is food as well. And I think you might not see it in front of you, but all of us have the opportunity to have an opinion and stir the pot. And now's a really, really important time in the next 15 years. So I don't know what I'm saying really apart from like, just because you're one person doesn't mean you can't get involved. It doesn't mean you can't stir the petition. It doesn't mean you can't get with another mum or another dad at school and find out where stuff comes from that's going in your kid every day and, and just mix it up, really. So that, that's kind of it, really. But I do want to do one thing, because I've got a present for our Italian guest here, a little hamper, and I've got a hamper of nice, beautiful things for you. Yes. Um, I've also... This is a this is a this is a voucher to get some proper food um, and cooked for you to take with one of your loved ones Thank you. wherever they come from. Thanks. That's so Take care. Thank you very much. Thanks for your help. Thank you very much. Bless you. Well done. Thank you, you two. Now I think we've got something here. What have we got here? We've got a box. I've got a pasta machine here. You're going to have a mug, and that doesn't mean that doesn't mean anything. And there's a pasta machine for you, darling. Lovely to meet you. Uh, Jamie, we can't let you go empty-handed. Thank you very, very much for coming today. It's been fantastic to have Jamie here, hasn't it? Thank you. Thank you very Thank much. You. Cheers, man. We've got a little gift for you. Um, we've got um, some. We've got some gifts. What is There's a is water flask. Like I don't know what that is. That's a for specimen. Testing your properly hydrated. Oh, is it one of those suction things? <laughs> 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 we've got some chrome bean bags for you at home. Some Google oh, bean bless bags. You. They're going to be my delivered. Oh my god, they're going to be to your house. And we've got some little androids Thank for you. your uh, little androids. Thank you. Oh yes, four children I've got. <laughs> my God. Oh, so, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much, Jamie Oliver. Thanks very much, guys.